From the United States, Walter Brown playing white. From West Germany, Eric Lobron playing black. And when I say from West Germany, that's not absolutely strictly accurate because Eric Lobron was born in America, lives in West Germany, so in some ways this is a derby game. Uh, Walter Brown, of course, a grandmaster, been in this series before, never actually won it, and probably one of the stronger players not to have won it. Eric Lobron, who got off to a cracking start in his first match against Quinteros. This is the state at the beginning of this second round of games. Lobron playing Brown, obviously a wind Lobron will put him practically out of reach of everybody else. Uh, Brown also needing a win very badly to try and take over the leadership of the group. Uh, with me as usual, Bill Hartston. Bill, longish game uh, underway already. Let's join it, but first of all, show me how they got to where they are at move 10. Well, these two are both very aggressive attacking players, and they've chosen a very sharp opening variation. That's Brown opened with his D-pawn, D4. That's his favourite opening move. He knows a great deal of theory, too. It's a few moves before we discover what opening they're going to play. It's only when the two sides get into contact with one another that you realise what the opening really is. Now it's Lobron's next move, which really determined the course of the game. It's an aggressive pawn push in the centre, which invites White to push his D-pawn to this square. And now after the exchange of pawns, the whole character of the game is set because black now has three pawns on the queen's side to white's two. And white has more pawns in the center. And this is called the modern Benoni defense. It's very sharp because white normally pushes for a quick advance of the center pawns while black's playing on the queen's side. A defense with which you are extremely familiar. I wrote a book on it once. Brown knows far more about this than I do. Actually, Brown himself has played this a lot with black. That's very important. The, the black bishop is coming to this long diagonal. And the pawn's already controlling the black squares. And that white knight move is very interesting. The, the knight has a very attractive square on c4. It's heading there immediately, where it attacks this potentially weak black pawn. It's one of black's big problems in this opening. start of the central advance. This bishop is black's great piece in the whole opening. Its influence on that diagonal is very strong. And black always has to keep a very firm eye on this e5 square, stopping the white pawn advancing there. So black rook, knight and pawn all holding guard over that important square. And this, this move of the A-pawn is to prevent any ideas of black expanding on the queen's side with B5, which is one of his major plans. Right, coming to the centre. That's a strange move, though quite usual in this opening. White first of all gets his rook off the diagonal of the bishop, and also maybe prepares later to bring it into the game along the third rank. It's a very odd way to develop the rook, but it usually pays for white to leave this bishop here until the situation's a bit clearer, and so it's the only way to get the rook out. Very interesting opening, very sharp position. And after that interesting uh, rook to a3, we've just joined the game with Eric Lobron, black, to play. We're still following the game, brown against none, but I don't like this so much, so I'll try a6. He still can't play f4. Hmm. I was hoping he played g5. No, this is kind of new. Well, I could play king h1. Yeah, but then f4 is still tough. Well, I wanted to play rook e1. 
Let's try it. Maybe we'll get him out of the book. I think he's going to have some problems. We'll protect our king pawn and get ready for a possible knight f1. Rook e1. What? I expected queen c2. Rook e1 takes the strength out of f4, maybe. Because the rook might be better on the f-file. Hmm. Could play g5 now. No, let me follow my old idea. I might want to switch my rook from a8 over a7 to e7. So I play b7, b6. Hmm. b6, that's strange. Now if he plays c4 later, he won't have queen b6 check. Maybe I can play f4 here. And he plays knight e g4, I guess. And then maybe bishop f3. Yeah, but what if he plays knight takes e4, followed by bishop d4 check? Oh, that's very, that's very hairy. Why should I give him a chance like that? I've got the better position. Just have to keep the tension. But I want to try something new here. I'm going to play knight f1. Oh, God. I expected f4. Didn't even expect this move. But it can't be so bad. I can't play g5 anymore now to prevent f4. So I'll have to stick to my old idea. Rook a8, a7. Hmm. Of course, it's what I figured. Why else would he have played b6? Hmm. Let's see, if I play knight e3, plays rook a7, f4, knight back to d7, e5, he's got to take it, the pawn, then I play d6, and he has to play rook e6. Then I could play f5 of bishop c4. That looks really good. Hmm. What else can I play? Hmm. I think I'll try knight e3. Well, what a surprise. I was sure you would play f4 now. Hmm. Oh, God. Now rook a7 doesn't look too good because f4 followed by e5. And I might lose the exchange. Hmm. But now I can play g5. His bishop isn't protecting the square anymore. Yeah. yeah that looks good. I'll try g5. Damn it. You didn't play rook a7. Yeah, this is the best move. I like knight f5, but... Well... He could take it, and he still has a knight on e5 is so strong. It's not so clear. I don't want to play f3, and he is threatening knight g6. i got to do something. Maybe knight c4. He takes, I take back, hitting the pawn. Yeah, but after h6, what have I got? He'll swing the knight over to e5 from d7. That's no good. I'll have to play knight f5 as I intended. I didn't even expect this move. This i got to take, or else he'll take my bishop on g7. I have to take this knight. Bishop c8 takes knight f5. Hmm. Well, he had to do that. And I've got a recapture. e takes f5. Well, now I have a lot of possibilities. I could play g5, g4. But I don't like bishop g5 then. I could play h6, but I don't like f4. I gotta activate the queen somehow. Get some active play here. Or else he'll just crush me. Well, let me just try and queen to d8 to c8. Protecting the a pawn as well in some cases. And attacking f5. Queen c8. Sharp opening, Bill. Who do you think has got an advantage at the moment? Very sharp indeed, but I think it's going much more the way Brown wanted it than, than Lobron. That this G pawn is going to be exchanged for the white F pawn, and then the black king position is very open. But it's a very hairy position, as they say. Well, let's rejoin the game and see if Brown also thinks that he's in a slightly better position as you do. Jesus, that's a surprise. Doesn't look good. He'd have to play H6, then I'd be slightly better. This can't be good. Play queen c2, he can play rook a7. I've got to take the pawn on g5. Then he takes on f5. Maybe I could take the knight on f6. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I've got to take the pawn. Bishop takes g5. Too bad. 
queen c2 would have been right f nice for me. I would have played g5, g4, threatening maybe knight f3 check. And then bishop g5 wouldn't have been so unpleasant anymore. But he took the pawn, so I don't have much to think about. Queen takes f5. What can I do here? Well, I've got the two bishops. It's an open position. Maybe I should keep the, the bishop on the board. Yeah. I'll play bishop to h4. Then I can go to g3 later, attacking his pawn on d6. Hmm. I didn't even look at this move. I expected something like bishop takes f6, maybe queen d2 or bishop e3. This move. Now he's got some weak black squares on the queen side as well. What a mess. I have so many possibilities. I can win a tempo with rook e7. Threatening maybe sometimes knight to f3 check or knight g6. Yes. This isn't a good move. I think I'll play rook a7 to e7. Well, I don't like this pin. He might be able to play knight c4. Why not get out of it with rook f1, threatening bishop takes a6. And maybe even f4 later, who knows. Rook f1. Well, now I've got to do something. a6 is hanging. My whole queen side is weak. If he gets to play rook b3, how do I protect my, my pawns over there? Hmm. Yeah, maybe I should play c4. Maybe sometimes I can put the knight in d3 and he can't play rook b3. My pawn a6 isn't hanging. Yes, I like this move. I'll play pawn c5 to c4. He's certainly playing very sharp. I didn't expect this too much. I thought I could play b3 now. I have to be careful. My knight in c3 is loose. But if he takes, I take with a rook, I'm much better. What will he do after b3? Maybe he can play knight g6, bishop g3, and then knight d7, hitting my knight. So I've got to be careful, my rook in a3 is out of the game. Yes, b3. He must be crazy. How can he play such a risky move in time trouble? He only has about 10 minutes left. Everything might be hanging. Knight on c3. How about knight g6 attacking the bishop? Maybe I can move my knight f6 sometime attacking the knight. He can't move it because his bishop on e2 will be hanging. Oh yeah, that looks good. Anyway, he doesn't have so much time. So I may, might as well try it. Knight e5 to g6. Hmm. Yeah, that's probably the best. Now if I play bishop takes f6... He takes with a bishop, hitting the knight. I have to play bishop g4. And then maybe he could play queen d3. Yeah, that's kind of... that's unfriendly. Maybe I have to move the bishop back to g3, hitting his d-pawn. Of course, I have to be afraid of knight d7, hitting my knight. But then probably bishop g4 is okay. I'll play bishop g3. Uh-oh. What can I do now? Everything is hanging. My pawn on c4. I don't want to take on b3. My pawn on d6. I gotta try to find an active move here. Hmm. Knight e4 doesn't look too good. Hmm. What about b6, b5? Threatening maybe fork, protecting my c pawn. Yeah, I'll try this move. It's a very messy position anyway. We both don't have so much time, so I better move it fast. B6, B5. <laughs> the one move I didn't analyze he plays. It's unbelievable. I guess it's just not my day. He keeps playing moves that I sort of didn't guess. Hard to believe. So what is he gonna do if I play bishop takes d6? Yeah, but I won't. I want to play knight takes b5 maybe, so I should take first on b5. I'm glad he didn't play knight takes d5 anyway. Yeah, I'll play a takes b5. Well, I'm running out of time. I better take back quickly. a takes b5. Well, I'm so what do I do here? Well, if I take the pawn on b5, he takes the bishop on e2. I can fork his queen and rook and win a pawn at the same time. Yeah, 
Rook and two pawns for two pieces. That should give me the better ending. Well, it's kind of uh, complicated, but I'm running short of time. I've got to do it. Knight takes b5. What? I didn't even expect this. I was quite sure he would take on d6, especially since he doesn't have so much time left. Hmm. But now I get two pieces against the rook. And two pawns. But what else can I do? I have to take the bishop on e2 with my rook. Yeah. Rook takes e2. Well, I could play knight d4, but then queen takes d5. I might as well win a pawn if he's going to do that. I intended knight takes d6. There's nothing else. Knight takes d6. Well, he had to play this. Now I might have queen d3. Maybe a good move in time trouble. No, but that can't be good. His deep pawn is too strong. It's just about to queen. No, I better, better eliminate this pawn before it gets dangerous. Okay, queen takes d5. Of course, let's see, in this position, several moves earlier, it's all forced now. We're going to get an end game, probably. One that's pretty drawish. But I don't think I can lose, and if he makes a mistake, I might even win. If we take the rook on e8, he takes queen, I, ta I win a piece, but then his c pawn is very dangerous. I could probably stop it, though, with rook a8, check, and rook c8. Yeah, probably, probably I can. Okay, I'll take the rook. Knight takes e8. Well, I don't want to risk queen takes queen and pawn to c3. This looks too dangerous. The c pawn may, might be a danger for him, but no, he must be able to stop that pawn somehow. I don't believe in it, so I'll just recapture the knight with a rook. Rook takes knight. Of course. He had nothing to think about, and neither do I. I've got to trade queens and win that pawn, so I'll have two pawns and a rook for two pieces. In an endgame, that should give me a little edge. All right. I'll play it. Queen takes d4. Well, you had to play this move. We're both in time trouble. Hmm. I have to take it back with the knight. Okay, knight takes queen. Well, I have no choice. I must take this pawn. B takes c4. Bill, it's a little surprising, perhaps, that his experienced a grandmaster as Brown should find himself being surprised so often by a player of the experience of Lobron. Yes, yeah, so I think it's Lobron who's being surprised more. Um, Brown's been handling this opening very well. He, he knows the position extremely well indeed and he likes the way it's, it's going. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but the last 11 moves have all been captures. We've gone straight from the opening, really, to this ending, where white has rook and two pawns against bishop and knight. Now, if, if a pair of rooks were exchanged, if black didn't have this rook and we were, it were exchanged for the white one, I'd have no doubt that white was much better, because this passed pawn is the, is the key to the position. But with a rook on, black must somehow try to coordinate the rook, bishop and knight to both get attacking chances against the white king and hold up that pawn. Now, rook, bishop and knight do work extremely well together, but we'll have to see whether they can cope with the pawn and create threats. I still prefer white. And it's Lobron and black to move. He probably thinks he's better in this endgame, with the rook and two pawns against two pieces. I don't think so. After knight c3, he has very big difficulties developing his king's rook doesn't really have any good squares for it, does he? No, knight c3 looks good. Knight c3. Uh, he keeps finding the right moves. If he'd moved his knight somewhere else, I'd be better. No, I'm probably, I don't have that much. I don't want him to take the bishop. Maybe I should move the bishop to d6. That way, if he attacks the c-pawn, c5 will protect the bishop. Maybe I could play even bishop b4, who knows? Yeah, bishop d6. He keeps on finding the best move. There's only two minutes left. Too bad. Now I have to play active. Give him some problems before his c-pawn starts getting too strong. Maybe put some pressure against f2. Yeah, bishop d4 looks good. Anyway, I can escape with my king to g7 if he checks me sometime. Bishop d4. Yeah, that looks like a good move. 
putting pressure on f2, maybe you can play knight e4. Wait a minute, if I play c5, knight e4, rook a4, bishop takes c5, then I take his knight on e4, yeah. Then I'll end up with an extra pawn, and who knows, I might even eke that out. Plus I gotta push the pawn anyway. Okay, c5. Yeah, I was afraid of this move. Other moves would have given me an advantage, probably. Hmm. How do I put pressure against f2? I've got to activate my knight on g6 somehow. Can't go to f4. Won't do me any good to go to h4. Let me go to e5. Yeah, it can't be good for him to give away his good bishop against the bad knight on e5. Knight e5. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus, only got a couple of minutes. Gonna make about eight moves. Yeah, what am I gonna do? I can't play c6. What can I do? Yeah, these knights are coming in. It's very dangerous. Yeah, I'm gonna have to simplify. Gotta take that knight. Bishop takes e5. Great. We've gotten rid of that good bishop of his. Well, I take back with the rook. Might get the c pawn, might go to e2 with the rook. Rook takes bishop. Mm, he's attacking the c pawn twice. I've got to protect it. The only way is to move it. c6. Well, I better not take any risks. Only about two minutes left. I better move this rook here fast. Rook c5, yeah. Can't advance the c pawn anymore. Yeah, rook c5. Gee, it's a shame. His pieces are really well centralized, otherwise I'd have some chance to win. Can't get my king rook in the game. And his king has a flight square on g7. Well, I have to protect the pawn, but rook a6 is so passive. That's better to be on the 8th rank. Maybe I'll be able to play rook c7 later. Yeah, rook a8 check. Well, nothing to think about, king g7. King g7. Well, I've got to protect the pawn. Rook c8. Well, now it's my turn. I've got a couple of combinations here. Knight e2. Check. He has got to go to h1. Then I can take the pawn on f2. He can't recapture because he's made on these on the first rank. And he's only up one pawn. Might be dangerous to open the f file. Ah, oh, but I have this nice trick. Maybe knight g3. Check. After this combination, he's got to take with a pawn. And then rook h5 mate. Oh, yes. Here, let me play this. Let me try. He's only he only has one minute left. Ninety two check. Well, I have to play King H one. I have to play it quickly. Okay, let's try it. He might fall into this trap. If he plays Rook C seven, for example. Yeah, Bishop takes pawn. Looks very good. Hmm. <laughs> Isn't this amazing? I wanted to play Rook C seven. He's got this cheap trap. Yes, he actually thinks I might fall into it. Yeah, I've got to play g3. I don't have any time. Hmm. Well, what can I play now? Got to move the bishop somewhere. d4, he might play rook c7. f7 is terribly weak. e3 doesn't look very good either. Hey, wait a minute. I can take the pawn on g3. We'll end up with a rook ending where I'm a pawn up. I can't even lose this game. Yeah. Play safe. Bishop takes g3. Well, I've got no time. No time at all. Yeah, I've got to take that bishop. It's It's got to be a draw, this ending. Even if I didn't have the c pawn, it should be a draw. Yeah, I'll take the bishop. Well, they have to play 40 moves in two hours. They're both in time travel. Just a few moments left on the clock. Bill, take us through these next few moves. Oh, loved one's little combination there has won him some material. The knight's forking king and a rook. He's given up his two pieces for rook and two pawns, but remember there was just rook and one pawn for the two before. So he's emerged one pawn up, two pawns against one, and the rook's cutting the white king off. It's very important to keep your king active in rook endings. It's an old Russian proverb that says that all rook and pawn endings are very drawish. I have to see if Lord Brown can make anything of his extra pawn here. And Brown has to free this rook sometime. It's defending his strong pawn, but it's not really joining in the game. Ah, there it goes. 
And he's giving up the pawn. He must be very sure he's going to win this one back. Yes, the rook's attacking the pawn. Right, well, now let's rejoin the game uh, with Walter Brown White to play his 46 move. Well, <laughs> that's a pleasant surprise. I thought he was going to play rook c2, cutting my king off. What does he think he's going to do here? Well, I can't believe he's hoping for king f2 so he can play h2. I mean, I'm not dumb enough to fall to that. I'll play king h2. Well, it should be a dead draw. Hmm. Can I cut his king off? If I go to c6, he can't take with a rook. Because I play rook h6 and we exchange rooks. It's still a draw. Hmm. I've got to try it. Rook c6. Of course, that's his only chance. If I take the pawn, he plays rook g6, cutting my king. That's no big deal. Yeah, but maybe I should attack his pawn first. That way, if he plays f6, he can't move the rook to g6. That looks intelligent. I don't lose anything with it. I'll play rook f3. Oh, I expect him to take on h3 with the king. It's a very easy draw. If I play rook g6, he can just play rook g3. Hmm. No. I have to play with king g7 now. Well, king g7. But I'm going to take the pawn anyway. I could probably trade rooks. This king and pawn ending has got to be a draw. King takes h3. Hmm. If I play rook g6 now, he plays rook g3. If I take, the pawn ending is a draw, because I can't get into opposition. No, it's not worth a try. Let me try to cut off his king from the f-file. Rook f6. So what happens if I play king g4 here? He takes on f3, I recapture. And wherever he goes with the king, I stop him from having the, uh, the opposition. It's a book draw. What's he wasting my time for? I'll play king g4. Okay, you want to draw? Yeah. Well, you, you defended very well. It was very complicated, you know. I think maybe I should have taken on d6. d6 with the bishop, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was interesting. Yeah, I was afraid of knight. Bill, a lot of uh, textbooks have little descriptions of how you win with rook and pawn against rook. Why, in fact, is it nearly always a draw, as in this case? Well, the trouble is the white king's too well placed here to, to stop this black pawn. And if black exchanges rooks here, white just takes back. And now this is the opposition they were talking about. If the black king comes forward, you need to get your king in front of the pawn always to, to help it along with king and pawn against king. And white's king always keeps the opposition. That's just right in front of the black one and stops the black king going forward. Now, if, if it's white's move in this position, black would be winning because the white king would have to go to one side or the other, letting the black king creep forward. But just by keeping immediately in front of it, Black's move here, if the king goes here, white's king goes here, if the king goes to the other side, white's king goes to the other side, and everyone knows this is a draw, and it's not even worth playing. Right, well, the result of that game means that now uh, Eric Lobron from West Germany has a clear half-point lead in Group B, half-point ahead of Walter Brown, who he drew with today. Next week, we see the other game in this group, that's Raymond Keane of Great Britain, playing against... Quinteros of the Argentine. Until next week, Quinteros against Keane from all of us here. Good night.